All right, let's unpack this. Today, we're going to deep dive into Kolmogorov Arnold Networks. Hakeem Gans. A fascinating new development in AI. It is. We've got a stack of research papers here. We do. Our mission is to help you understand what makes Cannes special, uh -huh. but also why they might just revolutionize scientific discovery. It's a big claim, I know, but I think the potential is definitely there. So what's so exciting about these Cannes? Well, they bring together two things you rarely see in AI, accuracy and interpretability. So you're saying they can learn complex functions with remarkable precision. Absolutely, even with fewer parameters than traditional neural networks. But they don't stop there. They also offer a glimpse into the inner workings of those functions. Okay, so they're not just black boxes spitting out answers. Nope. We can actually peek under the hood and see what's going on. Precisely. And that's a game changer for scientific discovery. Absolutely. All right, before we get too far ahead of ourselves, sure. let's build a solid foundation here. CANs are based on something called the Kolmogorov Arnold Representation Theorem. Catchy name, I know. Can you break that down for us? Absolutely. I'll try to keep it simple. Essentially, the theorem states that any continuous function, no matter how complex, can be constructed by combining and adding a set of single variable functions. So even functions with tons of variables can be broken down into simpler building blocks. Exactly. And that's incredibly powerful. I can see how that would be a major advantage when you're trying to model things in the real world. Absolutely. It cuts through the complexity. So where do CANs come in? Well, they're essentially a direct implementation of this theorem into a network structure. Ah, uh, I see. So instead of placing activation functions on the nodes, like in a typical multi-layer perceptron or MLP, CANs put them on the edges connecting those nodes. Right, on the connections themselves. So visually, a CAN looks very different from yeah. the layered structure of an MLP. More like an intricate web. It is, and that unique structure is what gives CANs their edge. Thank you for tuning in to Quantopian's Quant Radio, your AI-driven podcast exploring everything related to quantitative finance. If you enjoy this episode, don't forget to like and subscribe to stay updated on future releases. For more quant-focused content, join us at community.quantopian.com. There you can explore a wealth of resources, connect with fellow quants, engage in insightful discussions, and enhance your skills through our extensive range of online courses. Quant Radio is intended to help people develop their knowledge and skills in quant finance. This podcast is not intended to provide investment advice. And now, back to the episode. Okay, I'm intrigued. So tell me, how do they handle the curse of dimensionality? That's a great question. Traditional neural networks, especially MLPs, they often struggle with functions that have many variables. Yeah, they get bogged down. They do. The number of parameters they need grows exponentially, which can be a computational nightmare. But CANs, because of their unique structure, can achieve incredible accuracy with a surprisingly small number of parameters. Precisely. There's even a theoretical scaling law that predicts their error rate decreases much faster than MLPs as the number of variables increases. Now, that's efficiency. It is. I'm seeing something called grid extension in these papers. Oh, yeah, grid extension. What's that all about? Well, imagine you've trained a CAN, and it's performing well, but you want to squeeze even more accuracy out of it. Okay. With grid extension, you can actually fine-tune the network without retraining it from scratch. You simply add more points to the activation functions on those edges. It's like sharpening a blurry image by adding more pixels. It is. You're essentially refining the resolution of the network's representation. Okay, so we've got accuracy, but what about interpretability? How do CANs actually give us those insights? One of the coolest things about CANs is that they can be visualized. Oh, really? Yeah, since they're built from simpler functions, we can actually see how the network represents the function it's learned. And we can understand that. Yeah, we can. And there are techniques like sparsity regularization, pruning, and symbolic snapping that can make the visualization even more transparent. So we can actually understand the reasoning behind the CANS prediction. Exactly. No more black box mystery. All right, let's see these CANS in action. What kind of problems can they solve? Well, let's start simple. Toy data sets. Toy data sets. Yeah. Researchers have shown that CANs can learn basic operations like multiplication and division Okay. in a way that actually reveals the underlying mathematical structure. So they're not just memorizing inputs and outputs. They're figuring out the relationship between them. Right. It's true understanding, not just memorization. Okay. So what about more complex problems? They can handle those too. 
Cans are particularly good at learning special functions, like the Bessel function. The Bessel function. Yeah, these are crucial in physics and engineering. Even sophisticated symbolic regression methods struggle with these functions, but cans handle them with remarkable accuracy. Wow, so they're kind of like math whizzes. They are. In one study, a can achieved 99% accuracy on predicting Bessel function values, outperforming all other methods tested. That's impressive. It is, and it gets even more amazing. Researchers fed a set of complex physics equations, Feynman equations, to a can. And get this, the can not only solved them, but also discovered new and simpler ways to represent those equations. Hold on, are you saying the can found shortcuts that even physicists hadn't considered? It did. Some of these representations were so insightful, they surprised even the experts. How is that even possible? It's because of how cans break down functions. They see patterns and relationships hidden by the complexity of the original equations. Okay, that's pretty mind-blowing. It is. It's like the network is teaching us new ways to understand these fundamental equations of physics. That's incredible. So what else can these cans do? Well, they've even been used to rediscover a relationship in knot theory. Knot theory. Yeah, it's a branch of topology that deals with the classification of knots. Think about tying knots with a rope. Uh -oh. Knot theory helps us understand and categorize different types of knots. Interesting. So researchers created a data set of knot invariants, mathematical properties that help distinguish between different knots. Okay. And then they trained a can on this data set in an unsupervised manner. So they just let it loose on the data. Exactly. No guidance. And the can independently identified a relationship between three specific invariants, confirming a known mathematical formula. I'm seeing a pattern here. It seems like cans are not just good at solving problems. They're good at understanding them. You're absolutely right, and that's what makes them so powerful for scientific discovery. So tell me about this Anderson localization example. Ah, yes. Imagine a PhD student studying Anderson localization. Anderson localization. Yeah, it's a phenomenon in quantum mechanics where disorder can trap electrons, okay. preventing them from moving freely. Like electrons getting stuck in a cluttered room. Yeah, exactly. Now, this student is trying to pinpoint the mobility edge. Mobility edge? What's that? It's the energy boundary okay. where electrons go from being stuck to being free to move. Interesting. They can use a can to interactively explore the relationship between energy, disorder, and other parameters. And how would they do that? Well, by visualizing the can and manipulating its components, they can actually see how these factors influence the mobility edge. It's like having a virtual lab partner that can help visualize these complex quantum phenomena. Precisely. It's a powerful tool for exploration and understanding. It sounds like cans could be an incredible asset for scientists across many different disciplines. Absolutely. Their ability to offer both accuracy and insight is truly remarkable, but it's important to remember this is still a relatively new field. So while cans are showing immense promise, there's still a lot of research to be done. A lot of untapped potential. You know, yep. one of the things that really fascinates me about cans is how they challenge us to rethink the nature of AI and its role in scientific discovery. I'm listening. What do you mean? Well, traditionally, AI research is often focused on building systems that can outperform humans' specific tasks. Okay. But CAUSENS, they offer something different. What's that? A glimpse into a future where AI isn't about beating us at our own game. Interesting. It's about helping us understand the game better. I like that. It's less about competition and more about collaboration. So instead of replacing scientists, right. CANs could actually become their partners in research. Exactly. Imagine AI systems and human researchers working together. Side by side. Yeah, leveraging their unique strengths to solve complex problems. That's a compelling vision. But like any new technology, CANs have to face challenges, right? Of course. There are hurdles to overcome. So what are some of the things researchers are working on? Well, one of the main challenges is scalability. Right now, CANs can be computationally demanding to train. Especially with very large data sets? Exactly. So finding ways to optimize the training process. Make it more efficient. Yes, that's a key focus of current research. So making them faster and less resource intensive is crucial for wider adoption. Absolutely. And there's been some interesting work on hybrid approaches. Hybrid approaches. Yeah, combining the strengths of CANs with other neural network architectures. So it's about finding the right balance between accuracy, interpretability, and computational feasibility. Exactly. Are there any other limitations? Well, another challenge lies in developing a deeper mathematical understanding of CANs. Okay. We know they're rooted in the Kolmogorov-Arnold representation theorem. Mm-hmm. 
but we still have much to learn. About the capabilities. Yes, figuring out what types of functions they can and cannot represent. That's important. It is. It's essential for guiding their development and application. So there's still a lot of fundamental research to be done, exploring the theoretical underpinnings of CANs. Absolutely. And what about the human element? Ah, yes. How do we integrate human knowledge and intuition into the CAN framework? Yeah, we saw in the Anderson localization example right. how a user could interact with the CAN and guide its learning process. Exactly, and developing more intuitive and user-friendly interfaces will be crucial to make CANs accessible to a wider range of scientists. Yes, regardless of their AI expertise. So we need to think carefully about how humans and CANs can work together. We do. Creating synergy between human intuition and AI's computational power. Precisely. And of course, there's the big question. The big question. What kind of scientific breakthroughs might CANs enable in the future? We've seen glimpses of their potential. We have. In physics, topology, and quantum mechanics. But that's just the tip of the iceberg. It's like we've given scientists a new tool. Yes. And now we're waiting to see what they create with it. I'm particularly intrigued by the idea of CANs as a language model for scientific discovery. A language model? Yeah. Think about how large language models. Like the ones behind chatbots. Right. Can understand and generate human language. Uh -huh. Now imagine a model that can do the same. But for science. Yes, for the language of science. Functions, equations, and concepts. Exactly. So instead of talking to AI in everyday language, yes. we could communicate using math and physics. Precisely. Imagine interacting with an AI system using equations and scientific concepts. Asking it to explain phenomena, generate hypotheses, or even design experiments. It would be like having a research assistant that truly understands science. That would be incredible. It would. Is that science fiction or a real possibility? It's an ambitious goal. Okay. But I think the potential is there. There are challenges, of course. Of course. But if we can develop AI that can truly speak the language of science. The possibilities are almost limitless. That's a future I'm excited about. Me too. Let's take a step back for a moment. What if I'm a researcher trying to decide between a traditional neural network, like an MLP, uh -huh. and a cane? It's a great question, and there's no easy answer. It depends. If you need something quick and easy to train, yeah. and interpretability isn't a major concern, then an MLP might be the best choice. It might be, but if you're looking for insights... The why behind the predictions. Yes, and especially if you're dealing with high-dimensional data... Then a cane is worth considering. It is. It's a trade-off between speed and efficiency on one hand, and interpretability, and the ability to handle complex data on the other. As CAN research matures, yes. we'll likely see more guidelines emerge. Absolutely. To help researchers choose the best tool for their needs. I think so. It's still early days. It sounds like we're just starting to explore the potential of CANs. We are. What areas of research are you most excited about? Hmm. Let me think. One area that I'm really excited about is developing new algorithms for training cans. Okay. We talked about scalability being a limitation. Right. So finding ways to make training more efficient is really important. So making it easier for researchers to actually use cans. Exactly. Researchers are exploring different approaches. Like what? Well, things like using distributed computing or incorporating ideas from other machine learning algorithms. Interesting. Yeah, it's all about making cans more practical. More accessible. Absolutely. Another exciting area is exploring new applications. We've seen their potential in physics, math, and quantum mechanics. We have, but I think we're just scratching the surface. What other fields could they be applied to? Well, think about biology, chemistry, even social sciences. Wow. Using CANs to model biological systems, discover new drugs, or even understand patterns in human behavior. It's amazing to think about the possibilities. It is. It's like having a new lens to view the world. And we're just starting to uncover its potential. This has been an incredible deep dive. It has. We've gone from the theory of CANs to their real-world applications. And even glimpsed their potential for the future of scientific discovery. I feel like I have a whole new understanding of AI. Me too. It's not just about processing data. It's about generating insights and understanding. It's been a pleasure sharing this journey with you. Likewise. The world of cans is full of wonder and possibility. It is. And I'm so excited to see what the future holds. To all our listeners out there, we encourage you to learn more about cans. Explore the research. Ask questions. And let your curiosity guide you. Who knows? You might just be the one to make the next big breakthrough. With the help of these incredible networks. That's right.
Thanks for listening. Until next time, keep exploring.